today we've got the EK MRS 13. This is an AM FM in dash marine radio with USB SD card, auxiliary line input jacks, as well as uh, AM FM radio and wireless remote control. Premier version only comes in silver. It's got the SD card port, the USB, the auxiliary line input jack for iPod, MP3, uh, tablet input. Possibilities are endless. This unit is a 50 watt by 4, 200 watt total output, so it's got plenty of power, plenty of punch to run a wide variety of speakers. Inside the packaging, you'll notice it's tightly packed, secured with styrofoam and poly bagging, and a nice bright silver, almost aluminum finish. You'll notice that the size of these radios, they're extremely, extremely thin. So they don't occupy a lot of space on the dash, making it ideal for a wide array of installs. Um, you'll notice the chrome controls, the buttons. You've got a boot cover over the USB jack to kind of keep everything protected to prevent water or anything from getting into the USB. You've got the SD card port and the 3.5 or 1 8 inch auxiliary line input jack. The back of the unit is pretty straightforward. We've got our AM FM antenna input jack connection. We've got our red and white speaker uh, audio output jack for use with external audio amplifiers. We've got a center threaded bolt for use with the support strap for mounting in your dash. We've got our power and speaker connections and then the independently fused housing on the back. All secure, all marine grade. Ideal addition for any for marine application. In the packaging, we've got the owner's manual, wireless remote control, and wire harness. All important tools and necessary for every install would be the universal wire harnesses. This one uses a split ISO DIN harness, one for power and ground, one for the speaker lead connections. These will plug directly into the rear of the radio. Power and ground gets connected in on the bottom. Nice secure fit, release, and separated. These consist of four main power wires. We've got a yellow memory backup wire, which needs a 12 volt positive at all times. We've got our black wire, which is a 12 volt earth ground. It needs to be grounded to the frame of the vehicle or the negative post to the battery at all times. We've got a 12 volt red key ignition trigger. This gets power with the key on, loses power with the key off. And the blue wire, you may or may not use this in every install. This is a power antenna lead and amplifier trigger wire. This sends 12 volts to an external amplifier to turn it on and off with the body of the radio. Then we've got the speaker lead connection, which you'll see a pair of purple, a pair of gray, a pair of white, and a pair of green. So let's start off with the green. The greens are gonna be our rear left speaker connections. Solid green is gonna be our positive polarity. Green with a black stripe is going to be our negative polarity. Then with the whites, those will be our front left speaker connections. Solid white is going to be the positive polarity. White with a black stripe is going to be our negative. We've got our grays, which is our front right speaker connection. Solid gray is going to be our positive polarity. Gray with a black stripe is going to be our negative speaker polarity. And lastly, we have our purples solid purple being our positive speaker polarity and purple with a black stripe is going to be our negative polarity these are for the rear right speakers these connections plug in and out of the body of the radio relatively easily they push in secure you'll almost hear them lock into place so what you'll want to do is you'll want to pre-install the harnesses onto your speaker wire connections and your power lead connections and then simply just plug them in last. We have the rear support strap which gets secured onto the back of the automotive stereo. This allows you to secure it to the back of the stereo and onto the dashboard or the support brace 
this is an additional anti-theft feature that you know should be taken advantage of even if they manage to pry you off the front of the radio you have the rear support strap which is an additional tool in securing the radio to your vehicle then we've got the uninstall keys and the mounting hardware the uninstall keys are required for the removal of the radio from its chassis. Before we can physically install the radio into the dash or into the marine housing of the unit, what we'll need to do is we'll have to remove the trim ring in order to access the uninstall mounting locations. So if we take off the trim ring, we're gonna reveal two uninstall spots where we insert the uninstall keys. We're gonna slide them in until you actually feel the key start the bottom out. Once the uninstall keys are inserted, this releases the chassis of the radio from around the housing, allowing you to slide back the support chassis itself. So once this is physically out, what we're going to do is we're going to take all these individual tabs and we're going to fold them up and inward. And in some cases, we're actually going to screw this into the dashboard housing or the marina radio housing. Once all that's done and the front section is secured, then we could reinstall the radio reverse setup that we started. The reverse installation would be once this is already secured in the dash or in the marine housing, that we would slow install the radio body itself back into the housing. It'll lock itself back into place. And last, we'll pre-attach the install ring so we have a nice front cosmetic faceplate for, for a good clean install.